Okay, here we go. East side, west side, where's the camera? Doesn't matter because we're back for season two and you're on the best side and um, this is this is a new layout for me. So hold on, let's... Uh... Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Camera's right there. Gotta look at the camera, not the screen, Daniel. Come on. Okay, well, here we are. Season two, thanks to um, thousands of signatures out there. We are back and just making sure everything's up and running. Um, let's hopefully, let's hope that this uh, video uh, can make it. This is the new video format of season two. Again, again. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Um, yeah, uh, once again, thank you to the listeners for signing the petition. Um, you know, the network it can't 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 take this show down and it's because of you fine folks out there for uh for keeping us alive so um yeah let's let's get into it huh so i what i did here is i switched around um the monitors usually it's the other way around so i'm looking at the tv here um so yeah birthdays events here we go Video, fuck off. All right. Um, we have some events. You know, fuck it. 1242, during the battle on the ice of Lake Pipus, Russian forces led by Alexander Nevsky rebuff an invasion attempt by the Teutonic Knights. That's in 1242. Okay. Oh, look at this. 1621 on this day, April 5th, by the way, today's April 5th, April 5th, look at the camera, April 5th, um, where was I? Oh, the Mayflower set sail from Plymouth, Massachusetts on a return trip to England. Wow. The Mayflower, of course, um, was an English ship, transported a group of English families known today as the Pilgrims from England to the New World. We're in the new world. Um, okay, that one's kind of depressing. Okay. All right. Well, there's some there's some deaths too. A lot of deaths. Wow. Oh my word. Spencer Tracy. Oh, this is births. Okay. Sorry. All right, births. Here we go. 1170, the first one is Isabella of Hanolt. She died in 1190. Um, 1288, Emperor Go Fushimi of Japan died in 1336. Um, 1568, Pope Urban VIII. He's still alive. No, I'm just kidding. He died in 1644, um, but he is related to Carl Urban. I don't know about that either. Born in 1588, Thomas Hobbes, English philosopher. If you uh, have taken a philosophy class ever in your uh, academic lives, you probably have heard of this this fellow. And um, now we're in the 1600s, okay? I'm um, just going to go down here. I'm going to keep going. Uh, Benjamin Harrison V, American politician, planter, and merchant. Um, we're in the 1700s still. Sir Thomas Hardy, first baronet, English admiral, died in 1839. Any relation to Tom Hardy? We don't know. Maybe he was named after him. We don't know. Um, I don't know. Okay, we're going down. We're in the 1800s now. 1800s, still don't know anyone. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know a lot of people here. Let's just go to the 19 Oh yeah, like I said, Spencer Tracy, born 1900, died in 1967. Spencer Tracy, great actor. Um okay, we're in the 1900s now. And Betty Davis, 1908 to 1989. Oh, she lived pretty long. She got Betty Davis eyes. Um 
Albert R. Broccoli, American film producer, co-founded Eon Productions. Um, is that the... Yeah, he's a famous film producer. Let's see. 1912, Antonio Ferri. Ferri, Italian scientist. Um, we're in the 19... Oh, here we go! 1916, Gregory Peck. Gregory Peck. Hey, Scout. That's more that's more Sean Connery. I don't know. He died in 2003. Let's see. We're we're in the 20s now. We're going. We're going. We're picking up speed now. Um Hugo Claus, Belgian author, poet, and painter, died in 08. Class of 08. Um 1934 John Kerry, English author and critic. He's still alive. Died uh, born in 1934. Um, okay, let, let's 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 try to speed this up. Um, we're still I, okay. Forties, fifties. <laughs> Akira Tor- Toriyama, Japanese illustrator. He's known for creating Dragon Ball. Um, happy birthday! Happy birthday! Um, Diamond Dallas Page, 1956, American wrestler and actor. And can you guys hear that outside, the yard work? What a terrible time to do. Sounds like a jackhammer, actually, not yard work. (sighs) Okay. Maybe I should do this at night. You know? How's the lighting on this, by the way? Okay, 60s, 60s, um, 1970, uh, oh, 1973, Pharrell Williams, American singer, songwriter, and rapper. He's also an amazing producer. Um, happy birthday, Pharrell. So he's 50 today. Wow, Pharrell is 50. And he looks like that. That's insane. He has said in the past that he has a really... Um, uh, strict skincare routine and definitely shows he's uh, he looks great. Um, 1975, no one, <laughs> I mean, there's people, but no one I know. Oh, Sterling K. Brown, 1976, American actor, great actor. Um, 1978, Stephen Jackson, American basketball player, played for the uh, Golden State Warriors. Among other teams, he won a championship with the San Antonio Spurs as well, I believe. Okay, 1980, um, Lee Jae-won, Lee Jae South Korean DJ and singer. Tom Riley, 1981, um, English actor. Okay, we, we got we to gotta get through this. This is, we're in the 80s. We're almost there, guys. We're in the 80s. Uh, 1989, Justin Holiday, American basketball player. Is he still in the league? I don't know. Um, 19, okay, now we're in the 90s, 1990. Uh, 93. Very, uh, wow. <laughs> Very uneventful birthdays. <laughs> Woo! All right, let's look at some deaths, huh? I'll just do one death. Uh, 2017, Arthur Bizgier, American chess grandmaster. That must be a really cool title to have, a grandmaster. That'd be, that's a cool title to have. Okay, so I came across on Reddit... Um, Oh, first. I never realized how long that was. So I was on Reddit and um, I go on this, I go on many subreddits, but one of them that I was on was ghosts. And I wanted to show you guys this picture and, um, and it's, it's the top post on ghosts and I want to show you guys 
Do you guys see it yet? No? How about now? No? How about now? Just a frightening um, image that now is this actually a ghost? We don't know, but um, the, what is it? it says, after hearing taps and noises from my kitchen, I take a photo and see this, and that's what it is. Very creepy stuff. Imagine you're in your house, apartment, shack at night, and you see this coming at you and looking at you. That, that would be, oh my God. That would be terrifying. By the way, this is how I will be doing images from now on um, until I can um, get better at this whole video editing thing. You know, network canceled us. We're doing this on our own, guys. So um, just gonna try to just gonna try to do the best we can. So um, iPad stuff for now. All right. Anyways, that's just I wanted to show you guys that for the weird part. Um, I thought it was very frightening. And uh, I hope it uh, induces nightmares for you. Okay, now we are, oh, we're still on a little bit of a weird, weird science space stuff. So they found two black holes that are the closest ever to Earth and like nothing seen before. Two black holes lie just 15, 60, and 3,800 light years from our planet, respectively. That is insane. Um... Wow. Okay. Astronomers have discovered two new black holes that are the closest ones to Earth known, and they represent something that astronomers have never seen before. So it made me wonder, um, as everyone wonders, uh, what would happen if you fell into a black hole? And um, according to Google, according to BBC Earth, it says if you leapt heroically, why would it be heroically, into a stellar mass black hole, your body would be subjected to a process called spaghettification. Spaghettification, the black hole's gravity force would compress you from top, from head to toe while stretching you at the same time, thus spaghetti. Um, and there's another question, like people also ask, would you survive if you fell into a black hole? Um, okay. Well, it says... Thus, the person would pass through the event horizon unaffected, not be stretched into a long, thin noodle, survive and float painlessly past the bike. Could a human? Uh, it would likely survive. This is... So apparently, you would survive? Let's see. Could you survive a black hole? It would it could be theoretically possible, but probably not likely, to survive a trip into a massive black hole. And some scientists predict some forms of alien life might even live inside the Kauki horizon. I guess I think that's one of the black holes. Or however, if you should say goodbye. However, you should say goodbye to everyone you know and love because this move is permanent. That's interesting that there might be alien life living inside the horizon and what would they look like? Interesting. Long spaghetti noodles or something. That's interesting to think about. And maybe aliens coming kind of like interstellar. They can, they go through these wormholes or black holes and they can, because do we even know what's on the other side of a black hole? Um, we don't know. Right. So, um, maybe that's one reason, maybe that's, I mean, how aliens can get here. Not only can they master speed of light travel, but maybe for a little, you know, like, uh, like a portal jump, they can go through black holes. Wasn't that the, that was the kind of like the plot of interstellar. Like we found a wormhole neck behind Jupiter or something. And that would be interesting if there were beings that lived on the event horizon of a black hole. Interesting to think about. Interesting to think about. Anyways, I just wanted to share a couple of those with you, with you folks. Mainly, I wanted to show you the picture of the ghost on the iPad. 
Can you guys hear the jackhammer outside? It's so annoying. Is it picking up? I guess a little bit. I don't know. My God, I want to like throw something at that person. Yeah, maybe I should start doing this at night. Well, you live and you learn, I guess, right? Okay. By the way, this is my first water sip of the episode. Um, usually it's a green. Usually it's a green uh, canteen, but today I'm going blue. Just thought you you folks would know that this is not what it usually looks like. Uh, you guys have so hurt, you know, have listened to me. Kind of tastes like dust. I don't know. Still tastes good. All right. Anyways, so this is not a movie that I have seen yet. However, it I believe it came out today. Came out today, right? Where is it? Huh? Who? Today's April 5th. Let's see if it came out. Yeah, it came out. It says it's released April 5th today. Um, and that is the movie Air. Story, according a legend. <laughs> um, directed by Ben Affleck, starring Matt Damon, Jason Bateman, Ben Affleck. Uh, Chris Tucker's also in it. Viola Davis. This is a, an amazing, an amazing cast. Jay Moore. <laughs> okay. Follows the history of shoe salesman Sonny Vaccaro and how he led Nike in its pursuit of the greatest athlete in the history of basketball, Michael Jordan. So um, I think this movie is going to be amazing. Um, it's... Apparently, you don't see a lot of Michael Jordan um, in it, or the guy playing Michael Jordan. But this is mainly about his mom, and um, and the people at Nike. <clears throat> and um, so this is kind of a story about that. Oh, Chris Messina, wasn't he in White Lotus? Was he in White Lotus? Or am I thinking of another guy? I think I'm thinking of another guy. Yeah. I'm thinking of another guy. Okay. Um, yeah. It's going to be... Uh, Matt Damon is 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 in a lot of um, great things. But I... The most recent stuff that I liked that he's come out with was um, um, the movie where he's a... Uh, the Duel, directed by Ridley Scott. And then Ford vs. Ferrari is also an amazing film. If you haven't seen Ford vs. Ferrari, you got to see it. It's so good. Um but he's good at he's good at uh, Matt Damon's good at like you know playing real life people in in biopics and, and things like that. Um, also, The Martian, which was based on a real thing. Just kidding. Um, yeah, so it's Air. It's a, uh, by Amazon Studios and Warner Brothers. I think it's going to be available on Amazon as well. Um, it's also going to be in theaters, of course, as well. But um, I'll probably be watching it on, on Amazon Prime. I don't know when it comes out on Amazon Prime, but the release date says April 5th. So, um, yeah, if you guys get a chance to see it, go see it. Let me know what you think. Write in. I still have the same email, the best side podcast at gmail.com. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Also, um, a new trailer came out for Barbie. For Barbie. And um, thanks, Jim. I think uh, Barbie is, I think it's going to be pretty good. Uh, directed by Greta Gerwig. I think she wrote it too. Um, she's a she's a great director. She's just a great filmmaker in general. But um, I think it's going to be a good, I think it's going to be a, a good movie. I think it's gonna, definitely going to be funny. Um, Ryan Gosling is is an underrated comedic actor, I feel like. I feel like people just think of him as like, the hot guy, you know, um, and he is hot, but, uh, he's, he's, he's funny too. as seen in, uh, basically a bunch of his movies. Um, crazy, stupid love. He was hilarious in it. Um, the, 
um, the movie that he was in with Russell Crowe, The Nice Guys, that was he was hilarious in that. He's got he was also funny in La La Land. He's got he's got good comedic uh, chops there. And of course, Margot Margot Robbie is going to be Barbie. Perfect casting choice for that. And uh, uh, Simu Liu is going to be Ken as well. He's going to be like the Asian Ken. So, um, yeah, excited for that movie. I'm going to see it. Definitely going to see it. Uh, And you should too. And you should too. And you should too. Okay. Now we are. Oh, yeah, this is what I wanted to talk about as well. It's the Masters this weekend. Yeah, the Masters. Yeah, yeah. Of course, it's the course in um, Augusta National, in Augusta, Georgia. Very beautiful golf course. Uh, For those of you who don't really watch golf, I I wasn't really that guy. Um, Maybe it's just when you get older, you start appreciating golf more. Um, But it's, it's a nice, peaceful yet competitive uh, sport that you can just watch and uh, have a nice relaxing weekend and and watch it. And um, like I said, the course is beautiful. You get to look at some nature, fun nature. They keep it pristine and just a perfect, like, uh, scenic. Um, It'd be cool to play there. Apparently it's a very uh, prestigious course, very hard to play there. But, um, yeah, the Masters, it's going to be fun. Um, just real quick, I want to uh, talk about it. Uh, last year, Scotty Scheffler won, and apparently, according to a bunch of um, odds makers, betting people, sports bookies people, um, he's going to win it again. He's like the favorite to win it again. Me, personally, I uh, I got my pick on Rory McIlroy this year. I think he's going to um, think he's going to win. And but of course I'm always rooting for Tiger. Hope Tiger wins like he did, you know, a few years ago. That'd be cool. But um, realistically, I'm going with Rory. Um, also, uh, m- uh, m- uh, sorry, I'm stuttering here. Morikawa, I hope also wins. So those are my two guys that I hope uh, win. Um, but yeah, apparently, um, Scotty Scheffler is a betting favorite to win. Also, uh, John Rahm is also really good. Uh, Jordan Spieth, of course. Justin Thomas. Uh, Will Zalatoris is good. There's Tiger. Um, Seamus Power. Yeah, Colin Morikawa. Uh, Rory McIlroy. Hideki Matsuyama. He'd be cool if he won. I think he won. I think he won as well. Um, Kyu Hoon Lee. Shane Lowry, uh, Soon Jae Im, hope I'm saying that right, uh, Max Homa, um, Tony Finau. Okay, what is he doing? He's just hitting a pipe now. <sighs> Corey Connors, yeah. I mean, there's a bunch of other people in it, but I was just naming some notable names. Um, so... Yeah, if you have a chance to watch the Masters this weekend, make a, make yourself a little Arnold Palmer or um, put a little vodka in it. Have a have a John Daly. Um, that'd be great. That'd be great stuff. So um, yeah, exciting stuff. Exciting stuff. Let's see. Let's get into questions, huh? Hello, you have reached the... No. <clears throat> okay. I swear to God, that fucking guy hits that pipe one more time. Oh! Can you, can you hear this? Like, what is he doing? What is he doing? What the hell is he doing? (sighs) 
Okay, hold on. By the way, I'm wearing pajama bottoms. <sighs> Sorry about that, folks. Okay, uh, where were we? We were on, yes. Okay. Sorry for the slight pause in the uh, in the audio, if you're only listening to audio. By the way, um, completely fine if you do the video or the audio. This video will be available on YouTube and um, on my channel. Right now it's just Daniel Kellum. Um, but I'll be changing the channel to probably this the podcast. This will be the the flagship, I guess, as they say, uh, channel. So um, my short film will still be on there for those of you who haven't seen it or just want to watch it again and laugh at it. So, um, okay, let's go. Yeah, okay. Can we get to the fucking questions, Daniel? Okay, we got... You know who, he was sad we were canceled, but now we're back, and he doesn't know what to do. It's Kyle from Tracy. Hi, Kyle. Putting a face to the name, huh? Okay. <clears throat> hey, Dan. Welcome back? Network sounds like a bunch of assholes. Yeah, they, um, I have a feeling we will not be hearing the last of them fucking assholes to commemorate your triumphant return i'm cooking up i'm cooking up a couple of steaks having a nice glass of red and some good conversation if you know you know anyways speaking of steak what is your favorite cut of steak and how do you like to prepare it what three steakhouse sides are you having with it well glad to have you back it's been a while love kyle from tracy sent from my backyard while grilling an amazing question this week, Kyle, to kick off season D. Um, yeah, yeah. My my favorite cut of steak, you know, of course, I think a lot of people say the ribeye because um, it's got a lot of fat, got a lot of marbling, which means it's got a lot of flavor. Um, also, a uh, favorite cut of steak that I usually just enjoy is a tri-tip, is a tri-tip. But um, I guess that's, I guess if you're asking me like like a cut of steak, like um, like a cut like a filet mignon, a ribeye, a New York strip, porterhouse, a hanger, a flank. Um, apparently, flanks are you know coming back. People like flank steaks. Um, used to be a cheap cut of meat, but apparently now it's uh, getting it's becoming a hot commodity. Um, and of course, a hanger steak probably sl slow braise that but um my favorite um cut of steak um besides the tri-tip but i guess is that steak uh, you know i don't know maybe some more um i don't know maybe maybe it's not based on what i just saw on that article but um my favorite cut of steak let me just get to it nowadays it's i gotta tell you it's the new york strip it's the New York Strip. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you offer me ribeye, I'm going to say yes all the time. Um, and, you know, secretly it probably is still a ribeye because uh, I can't really shake it. Just full of fat, full of flavor. You know, once it's cooked right, it's just tender and, and just falls right apart. It's an amazing cut of meat. Um, there's a reason why it's, you know, so expensive at, at a lot of places, every place. But um, a New York strip for me, I'm really enjoying it. Um, in particular, um, New York strips from Costco are amazing if you haven't uh, tried it. I like them because there's still good marbling on it, but it's still like a lean. It's, it's, like, a, it's like a leaner cut of the meat, but it's still, you can, if you still cook it right, it's nice and tender and um, it's, like, it's nice and plump and gets nice and tender. Uh, so I think right now, you know, I'm really fucking with New York strips right now. So, um, yeah, yeah. And also there, we, I found a, um, a new butcher 
like a new butcher shop called the butchery that down the street from, uh, literally you can walk there in two minutes and it's there. And, um, uh, my girlfriend, and I bought some ribeyes from there, um, over the weekend and it was fantastic. But next time I go there, I'm going to, uh, certainly get the a strip, a New York strip. Um, yeah, probably a New York strip right now. You know, who knows? It might change in a few months, but, uh, right now it's the New York strip. And then you also ask what three steak sides are you having with it? What three steak sides am I having with it? Well, let's see what your most popular steak sides are. Steak sides. I mean, you, there's the salads, the mashed potatoes, um, mixed greens, you know? Um, but I guess like steakhouse sides, you know, there's like, I guess there's like not a lot of them, you know, there's like, you get like, there's like five, you know, if your basic steakhouse, you get like five or six choices. Um, let's see, let's just look popular. Yeah. I mean, if, if mac and cheese is a thing, mac and cheese, you know, that's more like, I think it's more like barbecue not steakhouse. Um, uh, I would probably go mashed potatoes, mashed potatoes bonus. If like, uh, they're like, they have the skin in them. If they're like, like the red skin in them. I love those, uh, mashed potatoes. You asked for three, um, some sort of greens, you know, nowadays I like to, I like to have my meat with like some vegetables, have like a nice, more balanced meal. So maybe like a greens, if they have like a, probably like just like the house salad, I'll have the house salad. Um, and you know, if it's a good steakhouse, the salad there is, is going to be good. That's two. Um, you know what? And maybe French fries because steakhouse French fries, the kind that have like the, um, Like they're like, you know, they're beer battered, of course, but they're like, they're not like smooth. They have like the little like, uh, chunks on them and it's just an amazing texture and you could dip it in the, in the juices and eat it up and, um, definitely that. So yeah, kind of crazy that I'm having two potato dish, two potato sides, uh, mashed potatoes with skins, uh, the house salad, good salad. And then the the beer battered French fries are probably my three favorite. Um, <clears throat> you know, those are like the average. You know, those are among the the popular uh, sides. So definitely that one. What's going on with my throat? <clears> oh, <throat> sorry about that. Had something caught in my throat. I've been I've been sleeping with the window open. Um, in the bedroom because it, it does get hot, um, at night. Uh, you know, I'm a hot sleeper. So like I always have to have the window open or the AC going, but, um, the past few nights, I guess, I guess all of winter and early spring, it's just, it's, it's so cold. And then of course we have a fan going for the noise. So, um, I wake up with a sore throat every day. <laughs> I wake up with a sore throat every single fucking day. And um now it's uh now it's we're still going, yeah. Now it's um going into my nasal passages now. So now I have a sore throat, sore nose. It is just terrible. But, you know, I am sleeping better, you know, it's better than sleeping hot, I guess, and sweating. You know, is there anything better than, I mean, is there anything worse than like waking up sweating at night? I want to get one of those, um, I feel like our, I think we're getting a new bed soon, but our current bed, it just, you know, traps the heat in and doesn't have that. Um, I want that cool technology, damn it. Um, or maybe just sleep on some ice cubes, but yeah. Um, where was I? Oh yeah. We're talking about steak. Um, yeah. Nice glass of red with it would be good. And, um, those are my three sides. So let me know what, what your three sides are. 
um, Kyle, and thanks for writing in. It's great to be back. It's great to have you back. Yeah, yeah, this is, um, this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. Apparently, filet mignon um, is overrated. <laughs> uh, I've done, I did some, a little bit of research, and yeah, it is a soft, buttery texture, but apparently, you know, you only get this little, this little shit for like $40. So apparently, it's like, you know, you can get better cuts of the steak for more of it and less, so... You know, apparently it's a, uh, apparently it's overrated. Also known as the beef tenderloin. Um, yeah. And apparently like the, the, apparently like the tomahawk steaks, they're just ribeyes attached to the bone, the rib. So like, and they usually cost more than your average ribeye. So if you just take the fucking bone off, it'll be cheaper, you know? And you're just getting a ribeye, so it's mainly for the look, to look like a you know cave like a cave caveman, to look like a caveman that just you know downed a dinosaur. I wonder how dinosaur tasted. I wonder how. Yeah. If you guys could, would you eat a, Would you eat dinosaur? And you know, not get sick with some ancient, you know, illness that you bring back into the into the current times. I think I would. I would eat like obviously I would not eat a, like a a, carno, a carnivore dinosaur. It would definitely be an herbivore. Um, like a triceratops. Would you eat a triceratops? They're like cows, right? Or a brontosaurus. I wonder how they'd taste. Would they taste like like a reptile? Or since they had, since I guess it's coming out that, that dinosaurs had feathers, would they? taste more like a poultry we don't know actually maybe they do know let's ask let's ask the internet what did i thought i was on mute what did dinosaurs a dinosaur taste like what does dinosaurs taste like so it says T-Rex tasted more like poultry than say beef or pork. Its flavor would likely have been closer to that of a carnivorous bird, perhaps a hawk than a chicken for a T-Rex. What was the tastiest dinosaur? <laughs> Plant eating dinosaurs such as Triceratops and Di- Diplodocus, Diplodocus probably would have been the tastiest. The animal fat in the diet of carnivorous dinosaurs such as T-Rex and Velociraptor would have given them an overly gamey flavor. One of the reasons we eat cows but not wolves. Yeah, so I think a Triceratops would be pretty damn good. You get a nice ribeye from a Triceratops, put that over the grill. Maybe you want to smoke it with your Traeger or Pit Boss. Oh, fuck. Okay. Yeah. I want to kind of eat some dinosaur now. Anyways. <clears throat> Thank you for writing in, Kyle. Um, oh, here comes a helicopter. Perfect. Let's 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 listen. You guys, hear it? Amazing, amazing stuff. Absolutely amazing. Um, yeah. So I want to get into the worst side before we sign off here. Um, Yahoo and these celebrity women abs, I tell you. Pulled up three. These were in the same day that I found them. Dua Lipa has epic abs in a Mermaid Barbie IG pic. And people are freaking out. People are freaking out over it. Pandemonium. You know, like stock market crashed. You know, ah! freaking out. Here's the next one. Vanessa Hudgens' abs are seriously epic as she tours beaches in the Philippines. If you uh, if you uh, are a fan of Vanessa Vanessa Hudgens, she's been in the Philippines for the past you know week or two weeks or something like that, and has been documenting the trip. Um, but her abs are seriously epic, everyone. And then last one, I I like this one. I like the 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 title of this one. Um, Priyanka Chopra Jonas has sculpted 
AF legs and abs in these IG pics. Um, just that's just um, um, <laughs> just the great start to an article. Um, so everyone know this, okay? Um, um, everyone know this. Dua Lipa, Vanessa Hudgens, and Priyanka Chopra Jones. They are all attractive women, but just know that they have epic, sculpted, yeah, epic, sculpted, and epic abs. What are epic abs, anyways? Anyways, just want to talk about, oh, well, they all go from the, to the same site, Women's Health, so go figure, but... I just, you know, I'm just, I'm not putting them down, obviously. They they do have good abs, and they are in shape, you know, because they're celebrities and they want to maintain the look, but I I am more, I am more uh, giving Yahoo shit for shoving it down my, my eyes every day I go on their site, because I still go on Yahoo and look at the news and things like that, but every other article is, um, her abs, have you seen them, you piece of shit? You know, things like that. So, um, um, <laughs> I don't think I'm ever going to get over that saying, um, you know, here, okay. What tool is that now? Anyways, this is the podcast episode one of season two. Please subscribe to the channel. I guess I can say that now smash that, uh, like button, hit that subscribe thing button and uh i will see you next week on this video it's uh by the way i kind of think i'm recording a little late again but you know had to had to set up the new studio just put a plant in the background um yeah i have nothing else i have nothing else so bye <laughs>